Hey, welcome back to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces today. In case you missed last week's video, this little drawing here is what I made. Today, I'm going to do another video with 12 different patterns with step-by-step how-to instructions. Most of the drawing part is going to be in time-lapse, but I'll give instructions in real time. Today I'm just going to be using three different sizes just to keep things a little easier. The 08 is going to be my largest size, the 03 is going to be my medium, and the 005 will be my smallest. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this down so it won't move. And let's get started. In the past I've talked about patterns that fill a space or that branch out from a corner. For this pattern, I want to talk about a hanging pattern. It's going to hang down from the top. And what I'm going to do is start by making some little wire type shapes. Some of them might have loops at the end, some of them might just be straight down, some of them might have little hooks at the bottom, or circles at the bottom. And that was done with the smallest size. Now I'm going to move up to the medium size and add some little charms hanging on these little wires. There's no wrong way to do it. And in the end, it will almost look as if each one of these is just a little string hanging with a couple of charms on it. Almost like it's a little mobile. And you can choose to use symbols that have meaning or just simple shapes. There's no wrong way to do it. For the second pattern, uh, again, I'm going to start here with the medium size, the 03. Uh, I'm going to make a row of circles or ovals. And you notice how they're getting smaller as they go towards the end. And I'm going to connect them with a little tentacle. And to make them look like these are little suckers on a tentacle of an octopus, I'm going to turn these ovals into disc shapes and a little bit of a third dimension. And make some patching around the other side of the tentacle. And then I could repeat this shape to fill the whole place, or I could have them branch out from one area.
And then the final step is to switch back to my smallest size, my 005 here, and just make a little dark circle or oval or dot in the middle of each sucker. For the third pattern, I want to make a pattern that's good at going across things in a row. And here I'm going to start with the large size, the 08. And I'm going to start with a sort of trapezoid shape, except the bottom is can be curvy. Really, all the lines can be curvy if you want. But then coming out from under it, I'm going to make another sort of trapezoid shape where they kind of go over each other just a little bit. And then where this one sticks out over that one, I'm going to curve down in just a little bit and fill this in. so that it looks like this sort of wraps around the one that's underneath it. And then you just keep that going until you've reached all the way across your shape. If you want to go back with your medium or small size and add a little bit of hatching, a little bit of detail, that's fine too. My fourth pattern is going to be another one of these directional patterns that goes across a shape or across an area without necessarily filling the whole thing. And for this one you can start with any size, really it doesn't matter, but I'm going to use the, uh, the medium size, the 03, to start with. And what I've made here is sort of a half yin-yang shape. And then instead of completing the yin-yang, I'm going to make another one of those shapes that kind of branches off to the opposite direction. And then just alternate. Once you've reached all the way across whatever expanse you're trying to cross, you can go back in and add a little black dot on the tip of each. And then I like to come back with my smallest size and make some little bitty circles or dots. I think this time I'll do dots. For the fifth pattern, I'm starting with my biggest size, my 08. And this one, to me, it reminds me of railroad tracks. Again, just like these two, it's the kind of pattern that can cross over a section. But in this case, you can really direct that crossing in any curved way you want. These two, you can, you can also curve these two, but they lend themselves much more to a straight path. This is one that lends itself very easily to a curved path. So all I've done here is I've drawn a curved line. And I'm just going to make these little lines that cross over it with little balls at the end. And just like any Zentangle pattern, you can alter this however you want. Some people actually do draw this kind of pattern with two lines instead of just one, so that it does look more like a railroad track. Some people say that the original way like this ends up looking more like stitches.
And just to show you, I'll do another one here that is the same thing, but with two lines instead of just one. And that ends up looking a lot more like a railroad track instead of stitches. For pattern number six, I'm going to go back to more of a branching pattern. I'm starting with my large size here. And what I'm going to do is make a wide curve, loop around, almost like it's a, a curved bit of seaweed or a little tendril or tentacle. But notice that I haven't come back all the way down. When I get close, I'm going to curve out the other way. And this time, I made a similar tendril to the first. Maybe it's a little bit smaller. And again, came back towards the inside. When I get back really close to the edge, but not touching it, I'm going to flip around and go that way, and then go back inside. And it's just going to go in and in and in until we get to the middle. And once you get to the middle, you just stop. Now I did the first one with my 08. Now I'm going to switch to my 03. And coming from the space between that shape and the edge of my shape, I'm going to make another one, but this time using a slightly smaller sized pin. And now I've switched to my smallest size. You can do this with all sorts of different sizes, but since I'm only using three pens today, I'm just going to show you real quick how it ends up looking with just three sizes. And the purpose of having different sizes is that the one where you had the thickest pen looks really close and the smallest pen looks really far away. For my seventh pattern, I'm going to do another branching pattern, but instead of starting at the corner and branching out of, I'm going to start at the end point of where I want my branches to go. And I'm going to start with a simple small spiral. This is with my medium sized pen. And I want to make what's called a tangent line from the corner here to a point where it would just barely touch the edge, the outside edge of that spiral. And same thing on this side. Then I want to do the same thing on the inside of the spiral. There's a curve here. I want to make a tangent from here to the corner. But I want to stop when I overlap behind this part. And same here, again. So you can imagine that line goes inside this. This is like a little scroll, like a rolled up scroll. I also need one from the end point of my spiral towards here. And also from the inside end. And that looks like a rolled up paper or a scroll of some kind going off into the distance. And then I figure out where I want another branch of it to go. Maybe I want another one that comes out here. For my eighth pattern, I'll do one that fills the whole frame. I haven't done any of those yet today, but I will for here. And this pattern is going to start with ovals. 
the ovals do not have to be the same size or the same orientation. They can go whichever way you want them. And we're just going to fill this whole thing with ovals. And make a dot. Not right in the middle, but off to one side of each oval. And to me, this pattern looks like a pile of deviled eggs. Because when you eat an egg, when you cut an egg in half to make deviled eggs, the yolk is never right in the middle. It's always off to one side or the other. So I'll go back and finish this whole thing. Now some people when they make these entangle patterns they like to get super precise and make perfect little rows. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's your cup of tea, if that's what you fancy, there's nothing wrong with that at all. And then some people like to dramatically change the scale and have some really huge and some really small. Again, there is no wrong way to do this. I feel like I say that in all of my Zentangle videos, but it's because it's the truth. Especially because every time you try a new pattern, you learn something from it. You learn what you like, what you don't like. And even just from looking at this, you can make a decision about which method you like for doing that pattern. You may like this way, this way, this way, or nothing. And you get to make a choice about what to include in your drawings. For pattern number nine, I'm going to do another crossing pattern. A pattern that takes a path. And what I'm going to start with for this is a sort of S-curve shape. I'm using my largest 08 here. And then I want another line parallel to that. And then I'm going to copy that exact same form there, starting here. where it looks like sort of a double helix. Now the next one is going to start on the opposite side of where that one ends. And then the next one starts opposite where that one ends. And if you want, you can change the size of these. So here it kind of looks like the spiral is unraveling and here it looks like it's getting tighter. Then I'm going to switch to my small size. 
make some hatching lines that cross in between the double helixes. Now switching back to my large size, there's one other thing that I need to address because I've been talking about so many of these that cross across a space. Sometimes you need a pattern to cross over a space, but sometimes you need it to be a little wider. And any one of these patterns, and really any pattern period, can be made a little bit wider using an aura. And one of the ways that I like to handle that is to make a double aura. one aura and that's a second making it a double aura and right now it just looks really confusing but if you go back in and you fill the space between the two auras with a dark black a deep dark jet black that just helps to provide a sort of outline around it that emphasizes this is an important part of my picture. And like I said, this can really be done with any pattern, but it lends itself very easily to these patterns that are designed to cross over a space. Another really fun path following pattern to make, kind of similar to this one where it can go in all sorts of directions, is to make a sort of string bean shape. Except let it curve in whichever direction you want it to. Notice that the two ends come to points, and then from those end points, you can keep directing the eye of the viewer by making little spirals. This and the train track one, they both work really well for making a path around a shape or across a shape in such a way as to draw attention to it. Now in this empty space here between my two lines, make some curved stripes, just black and white stripes, so it almost kind of looks like a snake, a striped snake with no head. Since I've kind of gotten myself on a roll with these path followers, I'm going to go ahead and do another. This one takes its roots from nature, like a lot of Zen Tangle patterns do. The first thing I'm going to do is just make a path wherever I want it to go. And then I'm going to make a series of leaf looking shapes that come off of one side. Here I'm making each of these with just sort of half of an oval that has a line going across it and then you're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side but when you repeat it on the opposite side notice that the half oval comes from the midpoint of the ones on the opposite side instead of coming across from it. did that one with the O3. Going back to the thought we had here, giving a nice dark outline can sometimes really help these things to shine. So I'm just going back in with my large size pen 
and making the outlines of these leaves thicker. Going along with this high contrast way of making a path stand out, for the last pattern I'm going to make another final path, starting out with my smallest, my 005 pin. So I used my smallest pin to make the path, and I've switched immediately to my largest pin, my 08 to make some really thick lines and instead of just doing an outline around it like I've done here or here I'm gonna make some other neat patterns behind it for example maybe I'll make a dark circle behind it and make some frilly doodads around that dark circle So here I'm just overlapping some flowery shapes behind this path. And because they are much darker than the path itself, they make the path stand out because of contrast. And all of that just helps to add to the contrast that makes this bright white path stand out. In next week's video, I'll make another tile like I've done in the past. And I'll show you how these paths can be used along the strings that you draw on the tile to provide a little bit of a barrier between your patterns. As always, I've left links in the description for all of the supplies that I used or talked about in this video. And those are affiliate links, which means if you use them, it directly supports this channel and it helps me keep these videos coming to you. If you want to be part of Mr. News Art Class, subscribe for weekly beginner art tips on Thursdays and new Zentangle videos every Sunday. And thanks again for watching. I hope I was able to inspire you today.